Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about a very, very important topic. Okay? Very important. Okay, I cannot stress how important this topic is since it appears in nearly every AP exam. Okay? And that is the topic of volume. So we're graduating from area and we're now moving into volume territory. Okay? And specifically, volume of a solid of revolution. So volume of a solid of revolution. And the hard part about this is to visualize how we can get a formula for this. So let's say we had a graph. Okay, let's say we had a graph. So this is a graph of F. So let's say we had this region, okay? Let's call this region R. So we're taking it from zero to taken from, um, a so this point to this point okay and we want to find the volume when revolved around the x-axis okay so how would you um start doing this problem okay how would you start now the very first thing you need to do is visualize how it how it would look like okay so what it would look like is that if the shape was sort of, so if it was revolved, then each point on this line would trace out a circle. Okay, so this would tr trace out a circle. This point would trace out a circle, although smaller. This point would trace out a circle. And this point would be fixed since it's on the x-axis. And what you start to see is this solid starting to form. Okay, and now you can see all these circles a lot more clearly. Okay, so you can see that each point on this region starts to trace out a circle. So you have this irregular looking solid over here, okay? And this seems to be a problem since we don't have a formula for a random looking solid like this, okay? However, what we can do is use the power of integration to help us find this volume, okay? And like I said, with integration, there's always a rectangle, okay? So let's say we had this line a rectangle what would happen if we revolved a rectangle okay if we revolved a rectangle about this line so this should not be hard to imagine okay this should not be terribly hard to imagine just visualizing the rectangle we're being revolved around the x-axis and you can see it makes a cylinder okay it makes a cylinder and as the rectangle gets smaller the resulting cylinder that is formed when it gets revolved that gets smaller as well and what we have what is called the disk method and it stems from cylinders very small cylinders that are very very thin looking like discs okay so this solid can be approximated by a disc let's draw this disc so you can break apart the solid into very 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 narrow looking thin cylinders thin discs okay with radius r 
and very, very small height, okay? So it stems from our decreasing the height, the width of the rectangle, okay? So if the, the rectangle's width, this one over here is dx, then if we revolve this, then this is also dx. And if we revolve this around, then the entire height everywhere will be dx as well. Okay, since you're just revolving the same rectangle, so the height will be uniform. Okay, it's a cylinder. So the height of the cylinder would be negligible. Okay, very small. It's a dx. Okay? And what is r? Okay, what is r? Well, r is the distance from the x-axis to our graph. And you can define that distance as simply the y-coordinate, f of x. So this is, if we had a point x, x comma f of x. You're literally, this is the y-coordinate. Okay, and you could draw a little cylinder over here. And you can add it, you can keep on drawing cylinders, and now you can start to see what we're doing. Just as we had, we start to decrease the width of the cylinders, the height of the cylinders, and increase the number of cylinders we had, like the rectangles, we can use an integral. Because remember, the integral was the sum of infinitely many rectangles of infinitely small width. So in this situation, the we're integrating the, the volumes of infinitely uh, thin disks, okay, of an infinite number, okay? So we're just adding disks on top of disks on top of disks. So what's the area of one such disk? So what's the area of a cylinder? The area of a cylinder is volume is pi r squared h, which is a handy formula to memorize and should be memorized by now. So h we said was dx, okay? So h is our negligible dx. And r, we said, is f of x. So we have pi times f of x squared dx. And this is what we can call a very small dv. Okay, so this d over here, okay, is a differential operator. It means you're taking an infinitely small volume. So this infinitely small volume equals pi times r squared times this infinitely small width. So if you were to integrate, your volume equals, well, pi is a constant, so you can take it out of the integral, f of x squared dx, okay, from a to b, from a to b. And now this is amazing because just using properties of the rectangle and how it revolves around a line to make a cylinder and how we can use infinitely small cylinders and add them all up on an interval, we just found ourselves an expression for the exact volume, for the exact volume of a solid re revolution, okay? So region under the curve if a region under the curve is revolved around an axis, then we could use this formula to help um, to help find the exact volume. Okay, so let's actually try an example. Okay, so the, this you have to visualize these solids. So I'll do drawings to help you visualize them. So let's have let's do a black axis. No. No, no. So let's say we have the graph of e to the x. Okay, and I'm doing e to the x because it's a pretty easy integral. Okay? So we don't have to worry that much about it. So let's say we have the graph of e to the x. 
And let's say you had a region from 0 to 2. And you revolved this region around the x-axis. Okay, so what will be the, the volume of the solid? So first you have to visualize the solid, okay? And to do that, what I would do is draw little circles representing the ends, the faces of our solid. Representing the faces of our solid. So this is one end of the solid, and this is our other end. And if it's revolved, the bottom should be a mirror image of this top section. Okay, so if we ever have this, let's make the solid pop out a little more. So this is basically the volume of the solid we want to find out. This little piece here. So you can see I'm taking a very long time to draw these because I want you to be able to visualize how these solids look like. Okay, so it's good if you, to visualize how the solid will actually look like if you want to actually go about finding areas, sorry, volumes of these. Okay, so let's look at, um, let's look at this. Okay, so we could use the disk method, okay? Volume equals pi, okay, times the integral from 0 to 2 of our radius. It's helpful to think of this as the radius of our, of our cylinder, or of our disk. And the radius is equal to f of x. So we define that f of x equals e to the x. So this is e to the x squared times dx. So we have volume, e so we have pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of e to the 2x dx. e to the 2x dx. And now this is a pretty easy integral that you can evaluate. Okay, it's a pretty, pretty easy integral. Okay, and this is one half. You could just use a u substitution with u equals 2x. So one half times e to the 2x. And you would put 2 and 0 as your limits of integration. Okay, so we can just pull this one half out because it's a constant. So one half pi times e e to the 2x, e to the 2 times 2 is 4, minus e to 0 is 1. And this is the exact, exact volume, the exact volume of this region, sorry, of this uh, solid, the solid of evolution. Okay, if we were to use a calculator, we can find out what this approximately equals. 0.5 times pi times e to the fourth minus 1. And we get 84.1918. And it's actually quite large. Okay, it's actually quite large. Okay? It's pretty large. So let's do another one. Okay? However, this one will be a bit different. Different in the sense that you can't really, um, that's not always around the, y, the x axis. So let's say. Let's say we had the graph of f of x equals negative x squared plus 4. Okay, so if this was 4, okay, let's call this 2, 
negative 2 and and sort of eyeball how this parabola will look like Now we want to find the region, the area, when this region over here is revolved around the y-axis. Now we get, we see a problem, okay? Because there's no easy way to find it around the y-axis. We did the last one for the x-axis and that was all fine and good, but for the y-axis, well, there's not really an easy way unless you're smart and think and you're smart and you think about converting the entire equation at negative x squared plus four as a function of y as a function of y so we have this little thimble looking uh object okay this little thimble looking object so this is our object our solid revolution We want to find the area, the sorry, the volume inside this. Okay. So what would you do? So let's replace f of x with y at the moment. Okay, and let's think about how you would um, find the area. So you could find the area in, in pretty much the same way. Okay, so you would have your radius, but your radius. We're going to be focusing on y coordinates. So the width of this um, disk would be dy, right? For the x axis, dx. Okay, you're adding them up horizontally. Here you're adding them up vertically. So you have to have dy as our um, <coughs> dy as our radius. And this x, our radius will be f of y. So basically a function of y. So we turn this into a function of y. So we have x equals the square root of 4 minus y. Okay, x equals the square root of 4 minus y. Now what do you do? Okay, what do you do now? Now you have uh, f of y. Okay, we just turned it into a function of y. We have r, we have dy, so we can integrate. v equals pi times the definite integral from, so what's our y value? We're integrating from 0 to 4. So now you can't put 0 to 2 because those are x. We have to put in y values of 4 minus y, 4 minus y dy. 4 minus y dy. And this is not a terribly hard integral. Okay, we can let u equals 4 minus y. That means du dy du equals negative dy because du dy is negative 1. So all we need to do is add a negative sign. So you can introduce, you can introduce a negative sign. You can introduce a negative sign outside the integral so that you can introduce a negative sign inside the integral. So the equality is maintained. So you have square root of u du. That equals negative pi times the integral from 0 to 4 of of what we have over here is um, u to the one half power du. So you have negative pi times the integral. I really shouldn't be putting these limits. Doesn't it's not mathematically correct. Times u two thirds two thirds u to the three halves. For, okay, and that equals negative pi times. 2 thirds times 4 minus y, 4 minus y to the 3 halves power from 4 to 0. Okay, 
So we're at this step right now, okay? So we have from four to zero, all we need to do is use our fundamental theorem. So you know this first limit's gonna be zero, okay? Because you have y equals four and you have four minus four is zero. So it turns the entire expression to zero. Minus negative pi, and I could see why that negative was out there, times two thirds, two thirds times four to the three halves. And four to the three halves is equal to eight. Okay, so you have negatives, so the negatives cancel. You have pi times two over three times eight. So we have 16 pi over three. 16 pi over three. And that is the volume of this uh, region, volume of the solid. Okay, so even if we are revolving it around the y-axis, what you can do is simply turn the function of x into a function of y so that you can easily, you can easily, easily, easily integrate this, okay, as a, um, with your variable of y. Let's do one more, okay? Let's do one more. So let's say we have sine of x. So let's do a cool down one. So this one's a bit easier. So f of x equals sine of x. And let's say we want to find the integral from 0 to pi. And this region, this top region, is revolved around the x-axis. So it's like a, a cool down one. It's a bit easier because it's around the x-axis. So how would we begin solving this? Okay, so first, we should visualize our solid. So we're going to outline our solid in red and visualize how it would look like. So here, we can draw a little circle, a little cross section. And we're going to draw the, a mirror image on the bottom so we, that we have our solid. Okay, let's add three more, two more cross sections just to make it seem more like a solid. Okay, so we have the solid over here. So what is the volume of the solid? So this one is, again, relatively easy. Okay, because we're revolving it around the, the um, x-axis. Or never mind, this one is deceptively tricky. Okay, and it still can be done, but it requires some trig that you actually remember whatever trig identities you learned. Okay, so you have zero to pi of sine of x, sine of x, that squared dx. So you're basically finding the integral of pi, zero to pi of sine squared of x dx. Now, sine squared of x, well, you can't really do a u substitution here, okay? However, if you remember trig identities really well, okay, or if you just, okay, or if you're just good at trig, you might remember that sine squared of x equals 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. And even if you didn't know this, it's important to keep this one, okay? Because it will pop up again, okay? I guarantee that it will pop up again. So using this identity, we can substitute in for sine squared of x. So we have one minus cosine two x over two dx, dx. So what do we get as a result of that? Okay, well, we could take out the two, so you have pi over two times the integral from zero to pi of one minus cosine of two x dx. And that gets us pi over two times x, x minus, minus one half, minus one half sine 
of 2x from pi to 0. Okay, and this one is, again, now we can just apply the fundamental theorem. So for pi, you have pi minus 1 half sine of 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0. Okay, so we only have pi over 2 times pi minus 0 minus 1 half sine of 0. That's also 0. So we have this, and if we simplify it, we get the volume of this solid is pi squared over 2. That's the exact volume of that solid. And using a little trig, okay, so I was lying. It was really a cool down, okay, because you have to know this trig identity. But if you remember it and could utilize it, and you, and you still remember it, you can solve integrals like these and find volumes of solids like these. Okay, so this is basically the general gist of finding volumes of solids or revolution that are like this. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to be covering cases that aren't actually like this. Okay, so cases where we have used another method of integrate, of finding volumes. Okay, so if you have any questions, okay, my general tips for these exercises, visualize the solid, okay, it makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing, okay, and then use the disk method, okay, or whatever seems applicable in X or Y, if it's about the Y axis, if it's revolved about the Y axis, then use Y, otherwise use X. And if you have any further questions, just comment down below. Make sure you like this video, pass it on to your friends. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.